So we got this email from Ben the Libertarian. Ben may be among our most hardcore libertarian types. I mean, uh, I hesitate to try to describe him because, you know, it's like describing somebody as like crazy into music and saying, oh, yeah, his band is kind of a hard alt country. And he'd say, no, no, we're not. We're a, we're an acid alt house twang core Americana band and be kind of pissed off that you picked the wrong category. It's like when my dad says, uh, here's one of my songs and says, oh, is that like country and Western? <laughs> ah, right then. So I'm not going to try to describe Ben. <laughs> I would just tell you, he, he, he leans way toward the libertarian end and he is a very smart guy and I like him. This is several days ago. He said, in the 6 a.m. hour, you mocked rightfully people chanting at an Occupy gathering, this is what a police state looks like. Because cops are saying, you're going to have to pick up your tents and move along. You know, you're violating barbecue ordinances. (laughs) It was right to mock them because they are chanting as if their next stop was a concentration camp. However, whether America is a police state is different is a difference in degree and not in kind compared to, say, your example, North Korea. Remember the 9 a.m. hour you're talking about the Senate passing uh, Senate Bill 1867 by a vote of 93 to 7, declaring the U.S. a war zone because of terrorism and allowing for the military to arrest and indefinitely detain any citizen considered a suspect which is a horror of a bill and hasn't gotten that much attention. Almost none. Yeah, it's it's astounding to me. We probably ought to do a whole show on it. And it got votes from Republicans and Democrats. It was it passed almost uh, over uh, almost unanimously. Right. Wasn't it like 93 to 7? That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so my question is, where is the line for you guys calling America a police state? And Ben, who evidently has a fair amount of free time and God bless him for it, uh prepared this it's it's wonderfully thorough i wish i did this sort of thing uh ben asks here is questions would america be a police state if government agents could write their own search warrants they do there are now exceptions to a judge issuing them they get these kind of temporary uh uh, warrant warrant lights and execute them would america be a police state if the government kept a list of who owned which guns It does. Would America be a police state if government agents arrested and assaulted people for recording their actions in public? Coppers. They have. And continue to. Would America be a police state if government agents, if government agents believed individuals were required to have ID on them and provide it upon request? They do. Would America be a police state if the government were to put cameras at every intersection and drones in the sky to monitor the citizens? We talked about that last week. They get city down in Texas, got drones in the sky. Yeah. Looking in your backyard. And any individual example, the answers to any of these individual questions are kind of, mm, wait a minute now, ish. But when you string them all together, it does start to paint a picture. And there's more. Hang on now. Uh, would America be a police state if the government took private property from one owner through eminent domain to give to other private proper, other private uh, entities and land developers? It does. Hello, Pacific Legal Foundation. Would America be a police state if the government could kill citizens without trial or charge? It does. Would America be a police state if the government could interrupt radio and TV programming to deliver a special message to the populace? Hmm. It will. Never thought about that one. I could go on and on, but I think you get my point. So I'm genuinely curious. Where do you draw the line? And consider where you draw that line, because you may put it at a place where once you've drawn it, it is too late and does you no good. I'll tell you this. The founding papas pointed out as if you know virtually every political uh, philosopher worth a crap like from the beginning of time the inevitable urge of government is to acquire more and more power and it always does it always has and it always does almost always in the name of safety too which is how yes. we fall for it yeah and and often safety from a foreign enemy and i tell you what this uh eurasia senate yeah exactly uh, the Senate Bill 1867 
cite specifically, and all the arguments leading up to it and afterward have cited specifically, well, terrorism, we're at war with terror, which, of course, is an absurdity on its face. You can't be at war with a tactic. We are like being at war with bows and arrows. Right, exactly. This battle against bows and arrows must continue. So we're at war with terror, and the homeland has become a battleground. That Those words were used specifically to advocate this bill. And so we need wartime powers on American soil. Seriously now. That's not Newsmax black helicopter paranoia stuff. When you say, wait a minute, that's crazy. I think I think we're in crazyville. I actually think we have arrived in crazyville. So what's the it's a medical comedy. It's a show, it's a set in a hospital. It's a very popular TV show. Scrubs? Yes, Scrubs. The star of Scrubs is the other guy in Idiocracy. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's his name? He's great. Yeah. He's the dumb guy from the future in Idiocracy. So it's him, a Wilson, and Maya Rudolph in what is a documentary about the future of America. The near future. Idiocracy. Check it out. It's, it'll frighten you, especially after this Trump thing. Any thoughts on the whole uh, police state thing? one 331 talk one 331 8255 Hardcore libertarian types, scare us. We dare you. No doubt when you string all those things together, it is a little frightening. The cameras, the IDs, the... Did I see last night on the news that the government has a log of all the texts that have ever been sent? Did you see that? Mm-mm. Stay with us. You're listening to the Armstrong and Getty Show. So uh, is America becoming a police state? We gave a list of of weirdly troubling uh, uh, practices, new laws to keep us safe from the government, which put all together pretty scary, had some libertarian types on the line, and they hung up because they don't love America enough to hold. one 331 talk bah, bah, We'll just continue to be sheep and accept our oppression. one 331 talk in the name of safety. They probably know if you stay on hold long enough, the government might be listening in. So they, yeah, they, you know what? You might be right. Get off the phone. David in Orangevale's online. Hi, David. Hey, uh, police state, I think not. Libertarian Wonderland, probably not. But I guess, you know, somebody could come up with a list of all the freedoms we enjoy uh, as easily as you come up with uh, the list that you've got. So... Take it for what it's worth. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. If, if the government has added more and more and more and more restrictions, surveillances, lists, registers, cameras, etc., the fact that there still are freedoms is enough for you? In other words, doesn't it all seem to be going one direction? Absolutely. There are plenty of freedoms. But you do you just not understand my argument at all? No, I understand your argument, but I think it's just typical fear-mongering. I mean, you can come up with, like I said, I could come up with a list of all the freedom, more freedom. Well, right, right, right. I right. get that. We get that. But aren't you concerned that it's all going one direction? For instance, we wouldn't I don't have... think it's all going one direction. You don't? Do I, think, you... I think we've had a lot of these types of, of, of things that we've been able to... When's do the last time we added a freedom? It's technology. When's the last time we added a freedom as opposed to adding cameras, adding the government's right to, you know, whatever, assassinate people around the world, various things like that? When have we added well, a freedom in recent history? Well, just my opinion. Oh, I get it. I okay, get it. And, and you have no arguments to back it up. I congratulate you. Does, does it bother uh, people like him at all that, that we were told over and over and over again by the people that started up a free country out of tyranny? That the one thing we must always do is is be ever vigilant about our freedoms, to safeguard them, to not give them away, specifically in the name of security against mysterious enemies. It, it doesn't bother you at all? It's another way that the, the two major parties uh, jerk us around in that the, um, you know, George Bush puts them things into place that uh, frighten uh, people, but the Republicans are going to stand up for it, or people on the people on the right will stand up for it because right. that's my party, that's my guy, so they'll yeah. overlook it. So it must be fine. And then so Barack Obama can move us a little further that direction, and the uh, Democrats will say well, that's my guy, so it's okay. And only like uh, the the ACLU and the Libertarians will 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 uh, you know. Cry wolf or what will you cry? Cry help. Something. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. Mm. Uh, uh, no matter what's going on. Right. Right. Any response to that, gent? One eight six six three three one talk. 
one 331 8255 But isn't it interesting that it happens no matter which party is in charge? You oh, get, yeah. You get a little more of this, a little more are going to look at your library records, a little more are going to put up more cameras, a little more of this. Well, as we pointed out many times, both parties, for God's sake, wake up and realize this, benefit from the growth of the size of government. The bigger it is, the more power they have, the more money flows through their hands, the better it is for politicians of both parties. If you look at the graph of the growth in the size of government, it has continued virtually unaltered and certainly unabated through administrations and Congresses and Senates of both parties. In the same way, control of the populace and more power benefits both parties. We got some... I tell you, let's just go wild. Let's go. What do you think of that, Jack? Let's just go nuts. Just put them through. I don't care. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crazy talk. Oh, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Sure. Let's go to line one. Who is this? Hi, this is Wayne. Wayne, unscreened, unfiltered. The Armstrong and Getty Show, Democracy at Work. Go ahead, bud. Well, basically, I'm, I'm about 60 years old, and effectively, I agree with you. More government equals less freedom. Sure, it does. Okay, I mean, just take a look. In the 50s, I mean, just, just look at the number of laws that have been written in the 50s. You're right. They talk about safety, consumerism. I mean, they always find an excuse in order to control people, and it's just getting worse and worse. How afraid of terrorism are you? Uh, say that again? How afraid of terrorism are you on a day-to-day basis? For you personally. How much do you think of it? I don't think of it very often no, because I believe... No, I, that's, that's not the case. I'm not, I'm not living in Iraq or Afghanistan, so I, I'm not as concerned about it. Yeah. Okay, Wayne, thanks, thanks for your thoughts, my friend. Nice to hear from you. I, was asking the, I wasn't asking the question rhetorically because there might be an answer that I don't know, but when's the last time f- more freedom was given to us? A law was passed. I, don't, I can't think of any. There used to be a lot more censorship of the arts. I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, I would, I would agree uh, with that. Sexy uh, stuff, certainly. I don't know if that... Uh, I mean that counts, but it's more cult. It's more a cultural thing than any sort of right, right. You know, we we ought to list Benjamin. Get to work. Uh, ben ought to list the fundamental intrusions, uh, which would be uh, uh, well, they're listed kind of in reverse in the Bill of Rights. Um, can you speak freely uh, about political matters? Uh, can you practice your religion freely? But. Uh, are you free free from uh, being detained and searched? Are you free from being surveilled? Um, you know, and we ought to have like our, our big three or four. And, and anytime there's a, a change in the level of freedom on that level, we ought to squeal. How did that one come down recently about them putting a, remember a, a GPS device on your car? Remember, there's a ruling on that. Oh, recently. yeah, without a warrant. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, I can't they can remember. Walk, I think, they can sneak into your driveway and put I, a GPS. I think, aren't they still considering that one? I think there was arguments about it. I don't know mm, if they had Last the time around, it got approved. The fact yeah. that that's even being considered yeah. is amazing to me. Yeah. Hey, Jeff and Auburn, go ahead. I want to squeeze at least one more on. Go ahead. Yeah, that guy that called when you said, uh, what do you guys think of that? That's the kind of guy, right? The, that kind of cavalier attitude that gets us all of our freedoms gone. I mean, I, sometimes I know you guys joke around a lot, but. They're taking so many of our freedoms that these people, these morons who listen once in a while or turn on the evening news, think that it's okay because they're going to be safe. By the way, when's the last time that they actually profiled a person who comes from the, generally speaking, terrorist class, right? They don't. They check old ladies at the airport and little babies and, and uh, your, your young kid when he goes through with a stroller, but a guy, you know, that's that looks a certain way or is in the terrorist class generally, they don't get it. So it's all a, it's all just a ruse all right. to take our way our freedom. All right, Jeff, thanks. Terrorist class, is that more expensive than first class or less? All right. <laughs> oh, jeez. One more, and Bill, uh, it's Bill and Martinez. Bill, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to bring up that I think it's really pertinent is Anne Rand's book, Atlas Shrugged. It's almost everything that we're doing today is almost exactly as if, she wrote the book for it. Yeah, you combine Atlas Shrugged with Brave New World in 1984, mix in a little Animal Farm, uh, you get the picture. I mean, the acquisition of more power and more control is, is in, by government is as inevitable as gravity. It's always existed. It always will exist. It exists every second of your life. And according to T.J. and George Washington and Adams and the rest of them, you know the list, it's our duty as citizens to resist that every minute of our lives. But nobody cares anymore. 
Say, oh, well, they're keeping us safe. Bah! Bah! Sorry, you know, Bill, you didn't deserve to be bleeded at. <laughs> you know, I tried to read Atlas Shrugged, and I shrugged. I uh, I don't know, I, I, you know, and I like to read, but that book just did not make the mark on me. It makes on a lot of people. It's 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 weighty, thick. <sighs> it's like nine million pages. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, uh, Ayn Rand. Uh-